it's a great place to park. Right in the middle of the road. Hey, I'm going to show you guys today how to get home if you're old Chevy truck, this is a 88, 1988 Chevy. If your old Chevy truck starts stumbling a little bit and you got a service, en service engine light, uh, in the case of my truck, um, this is what I did to get home. Otherwise, I would have had to get it towed to a repair shop or waited till the next day to buy tools and you know parts and all that. So what you need and you've got to do this before you break down, okay? You need a piece of wire. Get a piece of wire and tin the ends. Strip the insulation off the ends and tin them. And that's just solder. That's a, that's a way of saying putting solder on there. That makes a, a stiff end. In other words, this is, bra uh, this is stranded wire. But when you tin it, it makes it stiff. You do that for a couple of reasons. Number one is... You can use this piece of wire to jumper some pins on your OBD connector down below the dash and see a code. If you just happen to know the codes, then you can tell what's wrong with your vehicle, possibly at least the area that's wrong with it. Another thing, and this is how I got home, I knew what sensor was bad under the hood, so I jumpered the sensor. Now that, that sensor is not an on-off switch. It's actually a potentiometer. It's the coolant temperature sensor. The resistance in the in the sensor itself changes based on the temperature of the coolant. So you can't just bypass it and get away with it. But in my case, the engine wasn't going to run properly. I needed to drive an, a, about an hour to get back home. And the only way it was going to happen was if I had this piece of wire, which I just happened to have in the ashtray, which really is about one of the only reasons you should be using an ashtray anyway. <laughs> so let's go through um, how to insert this wire, where to insert this wire to get your codes. Okay, here's the OBD1 connector on my truck. And what you've got to do is place one end of the wire in hole A, the other end, and hole B. That is going to allow, allow you to read the codes on the dash when you turn the key on. So let's go back up here to the dash and see what that did. All right. Now I don't have a check engine light on this truck. It's called a service engine light. I'm going to turn the key on. Our service engine soon is going to start blinking some codes. And here's how that works. One long one, and followed by two short ones. That's code 12. One, one, two. Code 12. That just tells me, hey, it's all working. Everything's, everything's working. All right. Any code that comes after that is going to be actually your trouble code. So in this case, one, one, two, three, four. Code 14. One, one, two, three, four. Code 14. It's going to do each code three times, and then it'll, once it's done giving you all the codes, it will revert back to code 12. One, one, two, three, four, five. So I've got a 14 and a 15. One, one, two, three, four, five. Three, four, two, 45. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 45. So I've got a code 14, 15, and 45. My goodness. Let's see if I can figure out all that. Okay, according to this uh, OBD1 trouble code chart I pulled off the internet, 
The code 14 is a coolant temp sensor high temp indicator. 15 is a low temp indicator and 45 is an O2 sensor that, that read a rich condition. Here's what was going on. The, the sensor's failing and the sensor is telling the computer that the engine is cold, but the engine's not cold. It's, it's running down the highway, highway speeds, warm, no problem. So it starts puffing out black smoke because when the engine is cold, it, it shoots more fuel in there at a uh, richer condition. It's kind of like a choke. It's the electronic way of telling an engine to choke. So um, a lot of rich fuel is being uh, dumped into the engine, yet the engine's hot, so it's puffing out black smoke out the tailpipe. So that, um, the, 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 the sensor was failing high, failing low, and the O2 sensor was reading that rich condition, and that explains all three of these codes. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and clear the code. You can do that several different ways. You can disconnect the battery for 10 seconds. You can pull a certain wire off of the back of that plug for 10 seconds, or you can find your ECM fuse if you have one and pull it for 10 seconds. And pull your wire out of your OBD1 connector. Don't leave that in there. It's going gonna, it's gonna to goof you up. <laughs> Let's go under the hood. So if you if you just had the, the problems that I indicated, uh, kind of a little stumble going down the highway and all of a sudden you've got a service engine light that came on. Um, maybe you had your piece of wire and you were able to pull over on the side of the road, pull a code 14 or 15, you know that your coolant temperature sensor is failing. You can, to get you home, you can pull the harness off that sensor, pull the connector off that sensor, just pull the little tab back a little bit. I don't know if I can do this left-handed. I'll try. Okay, there we go. And jumper those two wires, just, I'm sorry, jumper that connector, those two pins with your piece of wire. Just jam that down in there can't do this one-handed but you get the idea I hope put each end of the wire in that connector all and, and make sure it doesn't fall out that's going to get you home okay it's going to get you home it's not going to fix the problem get home go to the parts place on Monday which today is Monday and then fix the problem which is going to be replace that sensor it's about 20 bucks for a lifetime sensor that's that's uh, that's what it looks like. It already has sealant on the threads. Take that one out, put this one in. First thing you got to do, drain your coolant. You... And this job will go a whole lot quicker if you remove the cap off your radiator. Let the air in. Okay, I got a couple of gallons of coolant drained out of there. I'm going to shut the valve. And remove that hose. I'll save that for another day. I'm going to show you two different ways of getting that sensor out of there. And this is based on the tools that you have available to you. Um, the first way is the easiest, and that is with a crow's foot. If you don't know what a crow's foot is, that's what it is, okay? That's attached to a six inch extension. That's a three quarter crow's foot. You can buy a whole set of these in metric or standard. And let me show you how easy this would be with a crow's foot. I'm just going to place it on there. I'm not actually going to take it out. Okay, so that's the tool installed on the sensor with a crow's foot. So you'd make about an eighth of a turn at a time or less, but you don't have to remove any of this other stuff that we're about to go through. 
I'd recommend getting one. Again, I'd recommend getting one. <laughs> so, you didn't take my advice. You didn't get a crow's foot. Okay, let's do it the hard way. Here's what you gotta do. You need to relieve the tension on your belt. I've built this tool several years ago because I deal, you know, I own primarily GM equipment. Um, this is a 16 millimeter socket welded to a piece of bar stock because in some General Motors vehicles you don't have a lot of clearance to get to the tensioner pulley. If you've got one of these, all you got to do to relieve the tension is, well, you need two hands, but there's how you relieve the tension. Then you pull the belt off of any pulley and it'll be off of the entire serpentine belt will be off the entire system. Once you relieve the tension first, then you have to remove this bolt. Remove the bolt, not the nut. The nut is welded to this brace. The purpose of removing the tensioner pulley is to get this brace out of the way because the brace is keeping you from removing that sensor. It is flat out in the way. Another eighth of an inch, Mr. Engineer, and we would have been okay. But, because space is so limited there, ha ha, look, this is crazy. Come on, man. Eighth of an inch, we'd have been good. But if you don't have a crow's foot, that's what you gotta do. That brace has to be moved out of the way. Tension off the belt first. Remove the tensioner, remove the brace, remove the sensor, replace the sensor, and undo everything, put everything back together, okay? Once you've cleared your code, you got your belt back in order, you put your coolant back in, run it, warm it up, get the thermostat opened up, make sure your coolant is at the proper level, check your, res your uh, overflow, make sure it's at the proper level. Go for a test drive, check it out, see how you did. Good luck. I'll put some links down below for some of these tools. I think they actually make this belt tensioner tool, and I know they make kits of crow's feet, so. I'll give you a, I'll give you some options. Thanks for watching.